and welcome to this Bioprocess International Ask the Expert webcast. I'm your host, Leah Rosen, the online editor for Bioprocess International. Before we get started, just a couple of notes. This webcast is being recorded and will be made available for replay in the multimedia section of our website. We've muted the audio lines, but we welcome you to type in your questions for a speaker in the chat window on your screen. After the presentation, we will begin the question and answer portion, and I will ask our speaker your questions from the chat window. Your questions in the chat window will only be visible to myself and our speaker. Thank you for joining us today. It is now my pleasure to introduce our speaker, Marilee Whitney from Millipore Sigma. Thank you, Leah. It's a great pleasure here to be here today to discuss a case study regarding how collaborations can really forward and advance the technologies associated with next generation processing. One of the things that's very important to understand when we talk about next generation is that there are a multitude of definitions which exist within the industry. I think if we polled actually all of our um, participants in the webinar today, I think you would find that each of them has potentially very different definitions. They could range from process compressions to having a light asset facility to a completely new greenfield facility leveraging single-use technologies or it could be continuous, um, fully continuous and connected processing. So it's important given these very different definitions that exist across the industry to understand what are some of the drivers and trends that are associated with the adoption of next generation technologies. As we take a more holistic view of the process, there's a very highly dependent interaction between the tens and drivers that are pushing customers to adopt these new technologies. More and more people are looking to have smaller annual production needs as they improve the efficiencies of their processes. They're looking for the flexibility in their manufacturing network and also understanding that there's a higher level of process complexity than there used to be even five to seven years ago. What we're also seeing is an increasing um, bottlenecks in downstream processing um, as some of these uh, processes are becoming higher tighter. We're also seeing facility fit limitations that are happening and additionally drive towards increased speed to clinic and a reduction in the cost of goods. While all of these trends and drivers interplay, they're really resulting in three key areas that are critical to, um, to the implementation of next generation technologies. First is process intensification. Second is the implementation of single use technologies. And finally, the process analytics associated with the development of these next generation processes will be extremely important moving forward. As we understand the complexities with the monoclonal antibody manufacturing process and the implementations of a fully continuous process, we really feel that this will happen in a stepwise fashion. Customers today will start to look at intensifying specific unit operations, potentially around upstream with perfusion or higher cell densities potentially continuous capture or inline viral inactivation, even moving into flow through connected polishing. And over time, they'll start to connect these different unit operations to have a more integrated, highly integrated process. And at some point, this will evolve in the future into a fully connected, fully continuous process. Of course, what will be critical in the implementation of this next generation, fully connected, fully continuous process will be the architecture that will help to support the connections. It won't just be the physical connections of putting different devices and pieces of equipment together, but it's also about the process controls, the analytics, what needs to be monitored, as well as the regulatory aspects of doing this. So how can customer collaborations help to unlock the true potential that we see with next generation processes. Well, we have an example of the Horizon 2020 collaboration. In 2014, the EU um, put out a call for proposals for various projects. 
And really their objective was to help the development of breakthrough technologies and innovations that would help underpin the innovations of tomorrow and the businesses of tomorrow. This was really had a quite strong emphasis on next generation processing and technologies and was again focused in the EU. The particular proposal that Millipore Sigma has been a part of um, has the original proposal was led by LEC Pharmaceuticals based in Slovenia. And as a part of that, there was a consortium of participants put together, including Millipore SAS in France, Sandoz in Austria, and then multiple other industry, industry and academic participants, um, including BOKU, KIT, um, the National Inti Institutes of Chemistry, and the National Systems SRI. And really, each of these parties brought a different perspective and a different uh, technical capability that helps build the larger picture um, when looking at a holistic process like next generation processing. From the molecule to the applications and um, equipment expertise to modeling expertise when we're looking at these new processes to model what the potential benefits are. Additionally, things like process analytics. So again, Collaboration is critical in bringing the different perspectives together to really come up with a complete perspective and a complete solution. The consortium has five separate goals that have been laid out which go across various areas of a next generation process. The first area looks at upstream through the use of flocculants and tangential flow filtration for cell retention. Next area of focus is continuous capture with looking and evaluating things such as continuous chromatography and even alternative technologies such as precipitation reagents. Third area was looking at um, single use to really replace stainless steel. And finally, the development of advanced analytical tools. As mentioned earlier, the process analytics are going to be an incredibly important part in any next generation process. Finally, the ultimate goal is to implement a fully connected and continuous process that brings all of these different pieces together. Clearly, the approach that the consortium has taken is to evaluate and finally select the best in class technology for each of these focus areas. But they're doing this through the lens of understanding the um, hurdles for implementation and overcoming them, the economics of these choices, as well as the environmental impact. Now if we take a deeper dive into the continuous multi-column chromatography step, if we start on the left-hand side of the slide and consider batch operation as most of the industry does execute this today, a batch operation for chromatography is done in a very sequential mode. First you load, wash, elute, clean, and then regenerate. And because you're doing this very sequentially, you get a much lower resin utilization than if you operate in a continuous mode because the minute you see your protein start to break through, you've got to stop and then go through all of these process steps. Whereas in continuous multi-column operation, you can get a much higher resin utilization, up to 90%, for example, because you're conducting multiple steps in parallel. So not only are you able to load onto the first column and subsequently onto the second column, uh, so you get much better resin utilization, but that third column can be utilized um, and going, be going through wash, elute, clean, and regenerate steps. So what this really allows you to do is have shorter operating times, be more efficient, and you're able to load more product onto your, your protein A. But it's not just about the multiple columns and running in a continuous mode. A really critical piece of this is the resins and their uh, rigidity associated so that you can go um, have high capacity operation at much lower residence times. So if you look at the graph on the right hand side, 
and we take a, an, a residence time of three minutes, for example. If you're operating in batch mode, you can achieve dynamic capacity of up to 50, 55, maybe up to 60 grams per liter. If you're operating in continuous mode, however, with these um, incompressible resins, you can get up to 70 grams per liter. Now where this really makes a difference is if you want to go to these shorter residence times. You can see a much steeper uh, loading curve or capacity curve in batch mode. So say you want to operate at, for example, half, half a minute of residence time. You take a significant hit in terms of what you can load onto the column at maybe 25 grams per liter, whereas a much um, higher loading capacity if you're operating in continuous mode, anywhere from 50 to 60 grams per liter. So what does this actually look like in terms of impacts to the process? Well, you can see going from a batch to um, continuous multi-column chrome without changing your resin, you do see some benefits in terms of capacity, reducing the media volume because you're operating with smaller columns. But I would say that in terms of process time, you actually have to operate at a higher processing time by about eight hours. Where you can see the true benefit of a continuous multi-column chromatography operation is if you also couple that operating mode with a rigid media so that you can decrease your residence time, get the um, improved loading capacity of the multi-column operation, and you can see that your process time drops from approximately 20 to 28 hours down to 5.6, which brings significant benefits overall to process and capacity utilization. The next piece of the process is after the protein A is typically a viral inactivation, and then your polishing with typically a bind dilute cation exchange step followed by a flow through anion exchange. While we've discussed the continuous nature of the capture step and some of the thought process that is done um, there and has happened through the work of this collaboration with Horizon 2020, these same types of methodologies and approaches can be applied to the downstream polishing. So for example, instead of having a bind elute for um, the cation exchange, it's possible to potentially move this into a completely flow-through step or potentially look at multi-column operation for, for cation in particular. But that would be a topic for another webinar. So in conclusion, biomanufacturers in the industry are considering upstream and downstream process intensification approaches as well as moving to a fully continuous process that utilize single-use technologies. The achievement of this fully connected and continuous process will be an evolution, starting with process intensification, beginning to connect some of those intensified processes, and then moving on to a fully connected and continuous process in the future. But we would contend the collaborations are critical to meet the challenges um, that are associated with the implementation of next generation processing. It will take the expertise of different areas from the molecules to the applications to the process analytics and different perspectives within the industry, both customers and suppliers, in order to really bring together the entire picture to overcome some of these challenges. And that concludes the webinar for today. I'd like to open the floor to any questions. Thank you, Marilee. Um, so how does Millipore Sigma manage collaborations with customers? So that's a great question. We actually have a very rigorous process where we go through um, establishing a core project team where we will typically have a project manager that is dedicated to a collaboration project. And then we will set about establishing what the scope of the project is. And based upon the scope and the mutual goals of both parties, a detailed project plan with key milestones and, um, if you will, stage gates are established for that project. Um, there are regular um, meetings that are set up and established, so it's quite a rigorous process 
And again, very critical to that is establishing a clear scope and mutually agreed upon goals by both parties. And is Millipor Sigma collaborating with customers to help develop other technologies? Yes, we are. Um, you know, this clearly extends beyond um, just next generation technologies, but definitely looking at establishing um, collaborations to develop the next generation portfolio. We also do this with our core businesses in filtration and chromatography, as well as the more custom side of our business um, with cell culture media, our single use and multi use systems, and then single use consumables as well. So, really, collaboration is at the core of, of all of our developments. How do you see the adoption of next generation processing technologies evolving? So we've done quite a bit of work in talking with customers to understand how this will evolve, where it's where the biggest pain points are for customers, and clearly there are needs across the process. And it, it really depends on um, whether customers are building a new facility, whether they have an existing facility that they need to fit. Um, a more efficient, higher titer molecule into. Um, so I think it will very much depend on the type of customer, um, whether they're established or emerging, whether they are have an existing facility or looking to expand their manufacturing capabilities. Um, but again, I see this very much in a stepwise progression, um, looking to meet their needs today with these process intensifications to drive efficiencies and cost reductions and then evolving over time to begin to connect and evolve into that fully connected and continuous process. How have you seen next generation technologies help customers? Well, we've seen some very clear examples and very uh, concrete examples. Uh, one that I have in particular is, you know, we were able to see an increase in cell density and an increase in titer by using perfusion in an upstream um, application really improve manufacturing capacity um, and drive an, a greater than 50% reduction um, in capacity utilization. We've also seen cost of goods reductions upward of 75% um, as it relates to reduction in buffers, reduction in uh, chromatography resin costs and reduction in water and chemical usage as well. So, um, you know, those are just some very concrete examples, but one could also see that if you're um, increasing or decreasing the number of runs that you have to do per year because you're more efficient, that you would also improve processing time, um, decrease the number, you know, the operator utilization. So I think there's benefits that we can see across the board. Okay. Well, thank you, Marilee, and thank you to our audience for joining us. The recorded version of this webcast will be available for on-demand viewing on our website, and as a registered attendee, you'll receive a follow-up email providing you with a direct link. We look forward to having you join us at our future Bioprocess International Ask the Expert webcast, including the Part 3 of this webinar series. We have a full lineup covering many aspects of bioprocessing scheduled for the duration of the year. Look for those announcements in your inbox. Thank you. Bye.